How's it going, everybody? This is David Cloniger with the Charleston Post and Courier with the inaugural edition of Countdown to Kickoff with uh, Game Cox now. First of all, thanks for everybody who's uh, subscribing to the newsletter. I deeply appreciate that. And also, if you want to ask me a question about South Carolina football, feel free to contact me at any time. Very pleased to, uh, to welcome as my guest today, former South Carolina quarterback, former NFL quarterback and Super Bowl cha- champion, Anthony A1 Wright. A1, how you doing? I'm doing good, man. How you doing? I can't complain, my man. I appreciate you doing this with me today. How's If you could just tell the audience, so what are you up to these days? Where are you living? And uh, just kind of how are you filling the hours in between football games? Well, I live here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, assistant coach at a local high school. And uh, just doing the coaching is, is pretty much what I do during the day. I get you. Okay. Well, let's, if we could, Anthony, let's uh, talk about your, your Carolina career for a little while. Now you came to USC in 1994, correct? And you redshirted that year? Yes. And then uh, you got to play a little bit in 1995 under Steve Tannehill. Uh, what did you learn during those two seasons? And uh, what, what, what did you learn from Steve Tannehill and about college football in general? Well, um, you know, coming into college football, you know, I was kind of unsure if I, could, if I could do it. So uh, having a chance to watch Steve do it and, and see how he operates kind of gave me the, the confidence that it, to uh, to have an opportunity to go out there and play well when it's my turn. Sure. So um, just watching him play, uh, practicing against him, practicing with him, um, they kind of gave me the confidence that I could do it at the college level. Come in in 96, you take over as starter. What do you remember about that first game where it's it's your ball, it's your team going out there to the huddle? Um, just not to get too caught up in the moment. Uh, I want to try to keep my calm, keep myself uh, in a place where I could go out and perform. And so uh, after about the first uh, couple of plays, um, it just became football, it became what I've been doing for the last, all my life. And, uh, you know, it became easy. And then just take us through the 97 and 98 seasons, Anthony. I know that they weren't as great win-wise as you guys wanted. And obviously there was the injury in 97. If you could just kind of take us leading up to that game and then how the rest of your college career developed. Oh, uh, well, in 97 actually was a good year for me personally. Um, um, actually, myself and um, Peyton Manning were one and two in every statistical category in the SEC. Mm-hmm. And uh, leading up to the Tennessee game, so then we get to the Tennessee game, then I get hurt, tore, I tore my knee, and yeah. then I came back from my senior season, and we had an awful season. We end up firing uh, probably the best thing that ever happened to me, John Reeves. And uh, uh, they hired a guy by the name of Chuck Reedy. Uh, he came in uh, with a new offensive scheme my senior year. We yeah. ended up winning only one game, and uh, yeah. which was a miserable, miserable, miserable time. Yeah. And, um, and so then we, you know, so struggled, struggled my senior year. Yeah. I mean, that, that one in 10 season, Anthony, obviously you could, you could just kind of see things. At what time did, you know, as, as a football team, did you guys get together and just kind of know, I don't know if it's going to get any better this year. I mean, I know you guys still played hard, you still fought hard, but at what point do you just kind of know that there might, might not be reversing that kind of season? I think it was after we played Ole Miss. Uh, we were, I think we were like one and three. Um, we went into Ole Miss and we reverted back the uh, Florida State offense that Brad Scott had brought in, which was more of a running gun. Um, let's move the ball up and down the field type of offense. And uh, we went in. Uh, we put up 33 uh, points or 31 points and ended up losing by two points. So I think we lost 31 to 33. Um, Ole Miss uh, had the ball with like under a minute to go in the game. Uh, the quarterback threw an underthrow go route. The receiver came back, caught it. Um, he ran down to about the 20, their 20, before we tackled him. And um, they ran like one more play, kicked the field goal, won by two points. And I think that was kind of like the, uh, the ceiling deal. Because uh, after that game, you know, we were one and four. And um, they started subbing in Phil Petty. I was wondering, Andy, Anthony, just uh, how difficult is it to be the quarterback, to be the, the leader of the team and to try to keep getting the guys up, you know, when you're going through that kind of year. It's something that I happened to see last year when the Gamecocks were going two and eight. Uh, and you, you just kind of see it. How, how difficult is it as the quarterback to try to get your teammates up to, to keep playing hard? It is very difficult because, um, you know, I remember after games, uh, opposing head coaches 
will come up to me and uh, and tell me, you know, if we're going to win, um, I was going to have to do it. And I was thinking to myself, like, coach, I'm doing everything I can. Like, I need some help. You know, I didn't I didn't have enough help out there. And, uh, and we were still losing. So, for as a quarterback, it's, it's frustrating when you know you're giving everything that you can give and you're still coming out with uh, – with a sour taste every game. And uh, we knew that as the season went on, it was going to get tougher because I scheduled it tough. So, uh, you know, it was frustrating. I mean, but what can you do? You know, I keep playing. Anthony, just about your pro career uh, in general, you know, you get onto the uh, practice squad of the Steelers. Was it that first year? No, I, I was on the roster. Oh, okay, I was on the roster. Okay, and then uh, you went to the Cowboys after that season. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. yeah, so I was. Yes, I went to the Cowboys. Uh, yeah, the next season. Okay, so just in general, Anthony, what was your NFL experience like? I know that you had that great run with Baltimore for a little mm -hmm. while. Uh, you know, and then, and then uh, you had a couple of more injuries. Just how would you sum up your NFL career? Well, you know what? I came in through the back door. Uh, you know, my last year at South Carolina. Uh, nobody was going to give me the love, obviously. We went one to ten. Um, so coming in from South Carolina uh, wasn't the best situation. But I knew I could do it. I knew I was good. I knew I could I could play at that level. Um, and when I went in, uh, I remember uh, after my first preseason game, I remember reporters coming up to me and asking me, you know, how did South Carolina go one ten with you at the quarterback? And I was like, man, good and man, that's a good question. Man, I said it's bigger than me. You know, it's bigger than me. So it, it was an entire situation going on down there. But uh, anyway, end up uh, playing in Pittsburgh. I made the roster in Pittsburgh. I did so well. Uh, then, you know, the same new situation popped up in Pittsburgh, and so that's why they released me. And uh, I ended up going to, to Dallas. New situation popped up in Dallas again. And so I went ahead and got it fixed in Dallas. And when I got it fixed in Dallas, um, I went to, to Baltimore. I went to Baltimore last for five, four or five years in Baltimore. And I finished up my career with Cincinnati for a year and then uh, New York for two years. And then I got I got injured. My last injury in, in uh, New York was uh, just a, I got a bulging disc in my neck. And so uh, it's kind of the same situation that Peyton had going on. And uh, so after that, um, you know, I went ahead and called it a wrap. And, Anthony, on that last Giants team, now, I don't believe you got to play that year, but they did go on and win the Super Bowl. Did you get a ring as well for, for being a part of the roster? No, no. Uh, I was on the team. I was on the team when they won the Super Bowl first time. Okay. And then uh, I was on the team that that, that second time. I got there with the neck injury uh, that next year. And uh, we had a great opportunity that next year, but we didn't go. That's when uh, Plexico got in his situation. Right, yeah. <laughs> We did, but we had another good chance to go that year, but we didn't go. So I ended up making uh, making it to the Super Bowl that uh, with the helmet catch. And uh, do you have, do you still wear the ring around? Do you, do you show it off at all? I mean, oh, yeah, know they're probably I'll, being bulky, but yeah, I wear it all the time. I wear it around my. <laughs> you know I mean, so I wear it all the time. I mean, I'm like, you know, I was I didn't have the opportunity to win a state championship in high school. I didn't have the opportunity to win a bowl game in college, but I did get a Super Bowl ring. You know what I mean? And I, I endured. I, I played for a long time, and I'm, I'm proud of it. And I take it that uh, this isn't something that you let the kids take to show and tell at school, right? You got to keep that one. Sure. Up, right? Oh, yeah. No, sir. Like, this is one of the things <laughs> from generation to generation. They got time to be losing in their school. <laughs> you know? Well, Anthony, uh, looking at South Carolina, I mean, I know that you, you still follow the program. Do you ever get to come back and take in a game, talk with your old teammates, anything like that? Yeah, I talk to my old teammates a lot. Uh, I come back every now and again. Matter of fact, I was down there uh, for a camp uh, that they was doing. Um, so I get a chance uh, to go back and, and be a part of the program. Uh, I got a chance to see my picture, my mural they got of me on, in the quarterback room. Yeah. I got a chance to see that person. So, uh, but yeah, I definitely, uh, you know, once you're, you're always game cocky, you know, it's my alma mater. Mm -hmm. So I always got ties with the school, so I'm always going to support it. And I'm sure you've been keeping up with, uh, you know, the program the past couple of years, the hiring of Shane Beamer. Uh, yes. To start about with this year, Anthony, have you talked with Shane at all? Have you guys uh, had you know, had a chance to sit down and have a conversation? Yeah, I actually talked to Shane. Uh, like I said, with somebody. I talked to him a little bit, though. I didn't talk to him as long as I wanted because he was kind of busy. Sure. And uh, I, didn't have a, I didn't have much time. So I, uh, 
I had to leave eventually, but um, met him and uh, we talked for a hot second. And uh, I'm excited to see what he's going to do. And I was going to, you know, that segs right away, uh, into the, the next moment. I mean, Anthony, a lot of people look at this team and say, eh, it might be kind of rough this year. As a former player and as someone who's connected with the program, what do you think about this team's chances for success this year? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it really all comes down to uh, talent. You know what I mean? Talent is what wins. And uh, if you don't have enough talent on the team, then uh, you're probably not, not going to get a lot of wins. So I, I don't know exactly what their plan is. I, I feel like they have a solid staff. I feel like they have guys that's, that's coached, uh, that have coaching experience, that have coaching knowledge. Uh, they, they've been in, uh, in the NFL, been in a college for a long time. So um, it depends on what they could do or what they have. And I don't know what they have. I just think it's, I just think it's going to be a, a season where we kind of wait and see. And I think that's probably the, the consensus opinion, Anthony. I mean, they've got some studs on this roster, Kevin Harris, J.J. Enigbari, Nick Muse, but there's just so many question marks at so many vital positions. I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty tough road to hoe. I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, like you said, the studs you named were are pretty pretty good. Um, again, I don't have a – Kevin, Kevin Harris played yet? Uh, he's practiced a little bit, and he'll probably play Saturday, but not much. Right. So now you got you know, I got actually see guys in that. If I see him in action, if I see him play, see everybody. Play, then I give you a better, a better feel on what I think they're gonna do this season. But right now, um, coming off of last season, and uh, you know, you need playmakers. You know, you need guys that can make plays on their own outside of the scheme. And uh, I'll, I'll be able to see a little bit of that uh, come this weekend. I uh, hopefully, you know, what I mean, if, if they don't blow them out too, or, or if they just show it, you know, if they just show it, I have a chance to see it and see what they do. Have an idea of uh, what it's going to be. Obviously, Anthony, the big news this week is that uh, with Luke Doty out, uh, Zeb Noland is going to start at quarterback. This was just made official yesterday. So South Carolina's got a 24 year old grad assistant two weeks ago who's going to be taking the snaps. As a former quarterback, what do you think of this situation? Uh, it kind of sounds like somebody's not been recruiting quarterbacks well. That's <laughs> what it sounds like to me. Um, you know, uh, again, uh, not, we, we play in the SEC, the toughest conference in the land. Um, so uh, whatever we got going on with the quarterbacks down there, I think we need to fix it um, because uh, there's no way we should be having a grad assistant having to play for us. And, you know, us being South Carolina playing in the SEC, a major you know, uh, having to rely on grad assistant. It is what it is. Um, you know, hopefully he goes out, he does well. I'll be rooting for him. <laughs> I was wondering, Anthony, will you be able to come down to the game uh, Saturday night or are you going to sit back and watch it on the couch? I'm going to watch that on the couch. I have to go to my, uh, my family reunion. Okay. Right. Or, um, I'm going to miss this one. Yeah. Any predictions for a final score? Uh, South Carolina a lot. EIU a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to hear, Anthony. I'm just uh, in, in wrapping this thing up, Anthony. I do thank you again for, for uh, coming on here with me. Uh, just what are your expectations for South Carolina this year? Not in terms of results, but in terms of playing competitive and playing hard. What do you want to see from this team through 12 games? Well, I want to see what the coaching staff does. Uh, I want to see how they uh, offense they implement, uh, how a defense they implement. And I want to see how the kids react to it. Uh, that's what I really want to see. That's really going to tell me a lot uh, as far as which way uh, uh, this school is headed. You know, we're, in a, we're in a day and time now where uh, these athletes, especially these, uh, these, these major schools, are starting to uh, NIL. Uh, 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 kids are, are coming into the school and they are you know, they're being paid. And so, yeah. you know, it's a different way to recruit. And I think uh, you have to be able to put in a good uh, strategy. And uh, as a former player, uh, the offensive strategy is very important when it comes to uh, recruiting kids. 
that's going to wrap us up uh, for our first edition of a countdown to kickoff. Uh, South Carolina plays Eastern Illinois at seven o'clock on Saturday night. Thanks once again to my guest, Anthony A1, right? Thanks so much for joining. And uh, if you haven't Thank signed, you. You can get a two week free trial on Gamecocks now, our new newsletter. Feel free to ask me any question. And I'll talk to you guys in a few minutes from our uh, offensive and defensive coordinator availability. I'm David Cloninger, Post and Courier. He's Anthony Wright, A1, former South Carolina quarterback and Super Bowl champion. Thanks so much for joining. We'll see you next week. Thank you, sir.